Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about something called tabular integration. Now, this is a, a nice little shortcut that helps us solve certain kinds of integration by parts problems a little bit more quickly and a little more uh, cleanly. So you might remember this problem here that we solved in the previous video, the integral of 9x squared sine of x dx. And you might remember what was interesting about this problem is we had to do integration by parts twice to get it done, right? Because of this x squared here, we had to take uh, two different derivatives to make this work. So what happens if I made this problem a little bit more complicating by doing this? I mean, I can get 9x to the fifth times sine of x dx. Now that's a lot more integration by parts, right? I have to do this um, five, six, about five times. And that, that's just a lot of work to do, right? So this is where tabular integration really comes in handy. We can sort of automate this integration by parts process and just make it come out a lot more cleanly. Okay, so here's how we do that. First thing we do is the same as always, we're gonna find u and dv. I'm gonna find u and dv, okay? Excuse me. So I'm gonna give you a second here. See if you can remember what the right choice for u is and what the right choice for dv is for this problem. Hopefully you got that u is 9x to the fifth and dv is sine of x dx, okay? And again, the reason for that is because we want to make that u, we want to take derivatives of u, uh, we don't want to take integrals of, we, we want to take derivatives of this 9x to the fifth term, we don't want to take integrals of it, okay? Second step is to put this all in what's called a di table. This is why you might have also heard of tabular integration being called the di method. Um, it's the same thing, right? So we're gonna create this table here. On one column, we're gonna call it d, and another column, we're gonna call it i. Now in the d column, we're gonna put the thing that we want to differentiate, right? And that in this case, that is gonna be our u, which is nine x to the fifth. And the i column, we wanna put whatever we want to integrate. In that case, that's gonna be a dv, and that's gonna be sine of x, okay? And now what we're gonna do, we'll continue this in black, we're gonna differentiate this column, we're gonna differentiate what's in this column repeatedly, and we're gonna integrate what's in this column repeatedly until something becomes zero. It's probably gonna come in this column, but you know, and we want something to turn to zero, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna take repeated derivatives of this. So derivative of nine x to the fifth is First derivative is 45 is to the fourth. Next derivative, actually let's let's do that in blue. Yeah, I prefer blue. So yeah, 45 x to the fourth. Next is gonna be 180 x cubed. Next, taking a derivative of this, three times 180 is 540. So that becomes x squared. Now the derivative here, so we get 1080x. The derivative of that is just 1080. The derivative of 1080 is zero. So we have a zero in this column. So now we're gonna take this many integrals over here as well. So integral of sine of x is minus cosine of x. Integral of minus cosine of x is minus sine of x. Integral of minus sine of x is gonna be positive cosine of x. We can have another positive sine of x this time. And now the cycle repeats. So we have a minus cosine of x here. And then a minus sine of x here. Cool. So now we've done this. The next step is all we do is we just cross, draw lines like this, connecting the terms across like this, just one down in the adjacent column. And when we do this, we assign an alternating sign. Right? So for this first one, we're gonna assign it a positive sign. This one, we're gonna assign a negative sign. This one's gonna be positive again. This one's negative and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is negative, this is positive. Um, and this one is, again, negative, right? So what, what we've done here is we basically, we're basically now doing that step in, this is basically a manifestation of that UV 
step in the uv minus vdu step, right? We're just multiplying these things, and the sign here takes into account the how many repeated integration by part things we're doing, right? So we're still doing integration by parts. We're just sort of streamlining it into a nice little shortcut here. And then we're basically done. We just have to write this out now. We're going to multiply across these green lines and incorporate whatever sign we have here and just multiply by whatever sign we have here as well. So we have a positive sign here, 9x to the fifth times cosine of x. So we just, uh, we don't multiply, we just multiply these two. So we have, so we just have minus 9x to the fifth cosine of x. Over here for the second column, we have 45x to the fourth times negative sign, times negative sign of x, so it's going to be positive actually. So we have 45x to the fourth sign of x. Okay. Now for this third one, again, it's a positive one. So we just, multi we just multiply through. So we have 180x cubed times cosine of x. So we have plus 180 cosine of x. Next one, we have another negative sign, so we have to multiply that as well. So we have 540x squared times sine of x, but minus sign, so we might make that negative. Okay. And then down here, 1080x times minus cosine of x, positive sign, so we just leave it positive. We just don't do anything else, so we have 1080x so it should be minus 1080x, my apologies. Cosine of x. And for the last one, it's a minus, but we all have another minus sign there, so the final thing is going to be plus 1080 sine of x. And that's our final answer. As you can see, it's a hugely complicating expression, which firstly is just a gruesome reminder of the fact that integration is so much more complicated than differentiation. And also, is it just shows you how much work this problem would have been without the DI method, right? So that's why the DI method is super helpful. This problem would normally have taken us maybe, you know, would have taken us easy, like about 30-ish minutes to just get all this stuff written out. But now with the DI method, we finished it in just a couple of minutes. So really nice shortcut here. So we're gonna do just, uh, we're gonna do another couple of examples and then we'll wrap up this video, okay? All right, let's look at another example. So once again, take a second, see if we can figure out what u should be and what dv should be here. So ho hopefully you got that u once again is x to the fourth and dv is going to be e to the two x. Right? So you could have got this using eyelid or just remembering the pattern that you know we want this guy to, we want to differentiate that x to the fourth there. So either way, this is the correct selection there. So let's go ahead and set up our DI table now, okay? So I'm just gonna set that up here, D and I. So what we're differentiating, remember, goes in the D column. So we have our X to the fourth there. What we're integrating goes into the E to the X column, into the I column, excuse me. So E to the two X goes in here. And yeah, we, can, we could integrate and differentiate simultaneously. I just prefer to keep differentiating and then integrate, so. Let's differentiate. So derivative x to the fourth, 4x cubed, then 12x squared, 24x, 24, 0. Pretty, pretty standard power rule there. Now over here for integration, it's a little bit more, a little bit longer. So first, because of this two here, remember we do have to, we have a little bit of an implicit u substitution there. But what we're going to have is one half e to the two x, right? Because of that two up there. Then we're going to have one fourth e to the two x, one eighth e to the two x, one sixteenth e to the two x, and last but not least, one over thirty-two e to the two x. Because we keep dividing by a half at each iteration. So that's that. Very nicely done. And now we're just going to once again draw our al draw our sort of arrows of multiplication and add the right signs. So this one's going to be a positive. This one's going to be negative. Positive. Negative. Positive. 
And we're basically done. We just have to multiply through and just write it out. So let's go ahead and do that. So our final answer is going to be x to the fourth e to the 2x over 2. Um, this, so both these are positive. That's going to be minus. So we have minus that 4 and that 1 fourth actually will cancel. So we're just going to have uh, x cubed e to the 2x. Right here, once again, this is going to be positive. So the 12 and the 8 actually will cancel into, I believe, um, 3 halves. So we're going to have plus 3 halves x squared e to the 2x minus 24 over 16 is going to be um, is going to be 3 halves again 3 halves x e to the 2x plus 24 over 32 comes out to uh, 3 fourths e to the 2x and then we just have a plus c here And there, there is our final answer. Pretty, pretty nice, actually, given how long this problem might have otherwise taken us. Anyways, let's go to the next one. All right, final example for the day. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, so once again, let's just quickly start. Uh, take a second, see if you can figure out what's a good choice for u and what's a good choice for dv for this particular integral. So I hope you found u is x to the fourth, as always dv is going to be 5 to the x dx and now we just go straight into our di table so we go d and i actually our d column is going to be exactly the same as it was in the previous example because we're still working with x to the fourth so once again we're going to have 4x cubed 12x squared 24x 24 and zero pretty nice stuff and also at this point if you are having trouble with how fast i'm doing the pro how fast i'm doing the like, you know the the power rule i know sometimes that can happen when you're some ways through integral calculus your differentiation sometimes gets a little uh, you forget it a little bit um but if you if that's if that's you i have a whole set of differential calculus videos and one of them of course is um on the power rule. So I do recommend you go check that out if you're having trouble with this. I'll be right here when you get back, of course. But yeah, so anyways, so we have, now that we've done, we're done with this, we can now look at this column here. So we can look at our 5 to the x, this integration column here. So the integral of 5 to the x is going to be 5 to the x over ln of 5. So we start with 5 to the x over ln of 5. And then we just do that again. So we have 5 to the x for ln of 5 squared, 5 to the x over ln of 5 cubed. Oops, sorry. Not particularly even there. Well, let's, let me just write these a little bit nicer. So write these a little bit more nicer. So 5 to the x over ln of 5 squared, 5 to the x over ln of 5 cubed, 5 to the x over ln of 5 to the fourth, and 5 to the x over ln of 5 to the fifth. We don't know what ln of 5 to the third, fourth, or fifth is, but it doesn't matter. So now we just, again, we're just gonna go ahead and draw our arrows, assign the signs, and we will be done. So it's minus, it's going to be plus, it's going to be minus, it's just going to be plus. And then we just write this all out, multiply through and write it out. So we're going to have x to the fourth times 5 to the x over ln of 5 minus 4x cubed 5 to the x over ln of 5 squared plus 12 x squared 5 to the x over ln of 5 cubed 
over here we have a minus, so we have minus 24x 5 to the x over ln of 5 to the fourth. And then finally we have plus 24 times 5 to the x over um, ln of 5 to the fifth plus c. And that are, there's our final answer. So that's really it for tabular integration. Again, it's a really nice method to help us speed through some of these very otherwise tedious integration by parts problems. And it gives us a nice sort of structure for doing that. We're still doing integration by parts, don't get me wrong. It's, this is exactly integration by parts. We've just streamlined it, right? So we're avoiding having to like, you know, create an almost like, internally growing set of uh, integration by part setups. So this is a nice way just to streamline some of our work. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful and yeah, I will see you in the next video and uh, yeah, uh, we'll be doing more practice problems on tabular integration and um, integration by parts in general. So stay tuned for that. If so, you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment and check out some other videos. See you next time.